Welcome back to Lindy Hop Mondays, where we will be doing a new Lindy Hop move every week at about 7 p.m. We haven't been great in the past, but <laughs> we're going to keep trying. We're trying. Time has no meaning anymore. But first, what we got to do is thank a few of the people who've been helping us out. We have a bunch of anonymous donors who we haven't talked about yet, so we're just going to thank them right now. Just a big group, anonymous. Thank, thank you. you. We also want to thank Aunt Betty. Yes. Hey, Seth, what are we talking about today? Oh, going fast. Going fast. <laughs> Lindy Hoppers always want to go fast. It's the big issue that they always want to tackle. And the big thing that we want to impress first, to go fast, you must physically be able to move fast. Oh. Yeah, you must physically be able <laughs> yeah. to move that fast. There's no amount of technique in the world that if you are physically unable to move your body from point A to point B at a certain speed, that's just not going to happen. Right. We need a level of athleticism to be able to get there. Now, there are points and like small things that we can change to make those, uh, those tempos easier, but in the long run, you just got to be able to go. It's an incremental process. Mm -hmm. You can't go from 120 to 300 overnight. And that shouldn't surprise any of you. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about those struggle tempos. I would probably say as we start to get towards like 150 Yeah, people start to have an issue. Yeah, yeah when we start to get to 150, you really mm -hmm. start seeing... The, the floors separate. Um, one, 120 yeah. is fast for a lot of people. Right, right. Um, that's a decent walking speed if you're not dancing to the swung tempo. So you've got a little bit of, of extra oomph going on underneath your dance. And the, the, the big thing I want to impress now is try everything that you're trying to do fast. Try it slowly first and work your way up. Try it a little faster, a little bit at a time. Don't just put on the fastest song you think you can dance to and try to do every move you can to it. Train your body and train it well and train it so you don't get injured. Right. There's a couple things that we need to think about as, like Joel said, training our body. We want to go about it in the way that maybe even a musician would do it, right? Nobody puts out a piece of music and goes, awesome, 300 beats per minute. They don't do it, right? We start from low tempo and move it about five beats per minute. Do the whole thing several times so we're comfortable. Then we do five beats per minute more and you go on and on and on. And by the time you get up to that tempo, it's no big deal. That's what we want our dancing to be. No big deal. And from our, from our point of view, uh, we're trying to build lifetime dancers and you can't be a lifetime dancer if you end up in traction for four years. <laughs> like this is, the, the big trick is you want to be able to healthily increase that speed in a way that is approachable for your body. Don't just get so determined that you'll do anything for it because, for you know what, next weekend, you can't dance anymore because you broke your ankle in 17,000 ways. Right, right. So we're Not to put the fear of dancing being that much strain on the body, but we just want to preface this with don't bite off more than you can chew. It's like when people do those, like, Exercise videos are like, so no, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. If your body hurts, stop. Just stop. Yeah. So take a break. Right. So we're trying to give you good ways. Especially, to... sorry. Especially when we're coming out of quarantine. Don't seriously. <laughs> don't think that you're invincible because you've been sitting oh. on your ass for 14 <laughs> weeks straight playing Fortnite or whatever the hell you've been playing, oh. and you're like, no, I'm just gonna go fast now. I've got all these goals. Just. You've Chill. got the energy. Yeah. We need to build up the muscle and the technique. So. Yeah. Sorry. Continue the, your thought. That was it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, this this particular video uh, came as a suggestion uh, in the comments of our cleaning up your switches video where they talked about doing the technique we were talking about in that video, uh, and they wanted to know how to do it faster. So we're going to begin with the switches. Cool. And then we're going to talk about some other things. Awesome. Let's go. We had the comment earlier in our cleaning up your switches video of how to do these faster. So what we're going to try and do is show you how to do it at a practice tempo, a nice and easy, mellow tempo, and then we're going to do it at that, about that 160 to 180 mark. Uh, if you want to know more specifically on how to do the entrance and exit, please feel free to check out that other video, but we're not going to be explaining that in complete detail here. Right, we're going to give it a... a 
a recap, a slow-mo, and then we're going to jump into it more up-tempo. And then we're going to talk about how we got it up there. Right. Here we go. A five, a six, a five, six, we swing it out, a one, two, three, a four, five, six, here we switch, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, swing it out, one, two, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. So I don't know if you can hear it, but we've got a metronome going at 170. So we're going to try to swing out, switch for eight, swing out at 170. Five, six, a five, and here we go. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, and one. So when we're talking about going faster with switches or shines or whatever you want to call them, the importance to me is the balance between the two people. Now, one of the things that I can do specifically on my end to make this feel comfortable is to think about rotating the booty and not reaching with the knees. So it allows me to do a lot more while I'm actually connected to a partner uh, because I'm twisting the body and instead of pulling back with a foot, I'm just rotating uh, the booty away. So if you'll notice here. <laughs> booty is a very common term in our teaching. So yes. we're, we're just embarrassed for maybe the shire type who aren't ready to hear the word booty. Oh no. <laughs> booty? Boo oh. Booty. Oh no. Oh no, booty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do a swing out. Uh, and then we're gonna get into the switches and we're gonna kind of matrix style. And um, I want us to see what's actually happening with the butt end, the little tail, um, and then we'll go a little bit faster. So starting with the string out, five, six, and here we go. A one, two, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm rolled into my right arm, pulled out to the left side, and all I'm trying to do is swing the swing that booty around and what I'm doing is I'm trying to step down I'm not trying to go anywhere so I've done my seven eight seven uh, eight the tension here is going to determine where my feet land so I'm just trying to swing and step swing and step swing and step swing and step and if it means that I have really small steps because Joel's not moving a lot it means I have really small steps and I just swing to the outside if he's moving a ton or maybe pulling me in, I'm going to step forward a little bit. But the biggest thing is I'm focused here where I'm almost countering my own body as opposed to feet, where my whole body, you'll notice, is shoulders, hips, knees, and toes are going the same direction. I'm trying to counter. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this swiveling action, but our primary goal is to get more functional and fast in today's lesson right. versus stylistic. Because every time you, you shape or change, if you lift them up a little bit more or take them down lower, you're going to be sacrificing certain things in order to gain those looks. And you'll be gaining other things. But in a, in a very just, if you're struggling doing these fast sort of lessons, Yes. Go on this journey with us. Absolutely. So uh, if I don't have a specific thing that I want to do outside of the leader's uh, actual feel of the lead, I'm just going to keep rotating those hips because I'm adaptable to wherever they want to put me on the floor. So let's try it a little fast. Er. And focus. <laughs> focus on the booty. Oh, <laughs> Here we go. Swing out. So switches back into a swing out. Five, six, a five, six, and here we go. A one, three, five. Swivel those hips, hip, hip, swing it out. A one, three, five, seven, eight. Now what I would like to do is to focus more on the knees, the legs. And we're gonna see what this looks like as we're trying to oh, do it yeah. some way. And mind you, this is an experiment for us as much as it is for everybody watching. I have a pretty good idea what's gonna happen, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe I've just never done this experience. <laughs> and so I'm gonna try to be really objective as a leader. I'm gonna try to make this work as effectively as I can. 
I appreciate it. Well, thank you. So the first thing I'll be doing is releasing from my lead um, and just moving my feet. The second time I do it, I'm going to try and stay as connected and um, within the partnership as I can, but move single-sided as opposed to opposite. We're gonna see how this goes. Are you cool with us doing two eights of switches all the way around? Sure. Yeah. So that they can see kind of what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and then for, you're gonna swing out afterwards? Yeah, so swing out, two eights, and then swing out again. So the first one, I'm just kind of lift off and do it myself. Okay, I'm gonna try to change nothing. Cool. <laughs> six, five, six, and here we go. Come on. Three, five, seven, eight, one, one. Three, five, seven, two, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. Let's talk about that one first before mm. we do the next one. Mm -hmm. So for me as a leader, what I felt was I was being rushed or pushed into the next count. Yeah. And um, everything felt very spread away from the ground. Didn't it? Yeah, it felt yeah. like belly tense. That's almost what I had to do. I had to almost go like lift up off of my, like separate my upper body from my lower body so I didn't feel it. On the plus side, it did feel like you were kind of like a cannonball, and I could huck you somewhere. Sweet. Pros yeah. and cons. Pro, yeah. That. So that's what that. Um, yeah, I don't. I I don't know if I would prefer it, but I do definitely see an advantage in it. Right. There's always advantage and disadvantage to anything we do. So now let's try the one where I'm still trying to stay connected, but I'm moving leg as opposed to. Here we go. Swing out. Two eggs. Swing out again. Five, six, five, six, and here we go. Come on. Three, five, seven, eight, one. 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 Three, five, seven, eight. Woo! Ha! Okay. <laughs> so, pros. Yeah. Um. I felt like if I could lead up, I felt like I could physically lead a prep in those swivels. Oh, so like cool. I, I could suddenly stop though. So if we're if we're doing them, Ooh. and you're moving everything, Ooh. I felt like I could get to a point Ooh, hot. Oh. and Ooh. physically lead top turns and return Ooh. back right. into it so I could time that out. Pro for me, or sorry, con for me, if you found that as a pro and we were going fast, my arm would be <laughs> behind yeah. my head. You know, because you, you're so, rotation is so heavy that unless you are just so incredibly tight, it's not gonna happen quickly. It uh, was not great. <laughs> um, no. it, it was just more noise than I would prefer to have in my dance. Right. But if I'm questing for a pro. Sure. So say for example, we were in the switches and we're doing them saying in a way that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. So if we're going one, two, three, up, four, five, six, seven. And normally when we do these, we're pretty chill. But I were to suddenly engage my torso here, it would be able I would be able to get out of the switches via not necessarily just a swing out, I could use a top turn or something like that. Right. So that's the detail that it tells me. If I wanted to lead something other than what is expected, yeah. if I could engage the upper portion of the torso mm -hmm. of the follow, I could do something else. Yeah, if you wanted to be like, how can we use this weird pro slash con idea into a pro pro for both per, uh, partners, just taking it from this nice kind of chill to, oh, pay attention, now we're doing something completely new, that would get my attention. But unlike the other one, can you do the, the first one you did? Yeah. I'm gonna try to do that same thing while. Oh, just my like. Yeah, your little cannonball-y. My leg. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm gonna try to lead that same thing, and we're gonna see what happens. Okay. Do you want a slow tempo or? Let's do it slow, just so we don't hurt ourselves. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Because right now, it's just really disconnected from me. Like, that's cool. What are you doing? And all I really got is, like, her elbow up. Yeah. And so me trying to lead a full body connection in a time where the fog's leading themselves through those, pretty much the, the signal isn't even there. Right. Now, did I, as a follow who wants to follow, feel a difference when he started doing that? Yes. Is it then up to me to go, oh, I see what you're looking for and kind of um, frame up, right? Um, and kind of get into that, that belly of movement? Yes. I don't think it's not doable, but if your follow's not really, really, really wanting to pay attention, it might just go by the wayside. They might not ever know what you're trying to do. The, um, the only thing I really feel like I can lead out of the cannonball as prescribed or described. So if you're a little cannonball. Oh, if I'm a cannonball, I just go this. The oh. only thing I really feel like I can do isn't even a swing out. It feels like the only thing I can do is like on the right ah. side of the pass because she's <laughs> only opened up to that idea. Right. Maybe even like a catch into close. But because of how she's disconnected from me, I have no sense of where she's planning to go other than like this. <laughs> That's all that I can really feel from that idea. It's true. One of the one of the things that it, it kind of encourages, and I'm not a fan of being super turned out uh, in general. I mean, I, I enjoy rotating and turning out, but I, I, I don't normally keep myself this way. But just kind of lifting up makes me want to almost like walk around in this sideways. Yes. I feel like there's got to be some sort of a vintage. Like a round dance or something like that? Yeah. 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 Probably. Probably. So yeah, so it makes me want to open up. And then of course when I open up, I tend to not want to watch. And there's just a whole slew of things. So in the way that we do or in, in the way that I do swivels and we do switches, um, keeping the lower body rotating and clicking it onto itself, basically keeping the, the upper body relatively um, stable, rotating the hips so that they will only go so far and then power themselves back, using that stretch away will continue, whether we're dancing slow or fast, to keep everything connected, keep everybody in the loop, and then we're we're not out on our own being like, when are the swivels gonna end? Right. And and a lot of a lot of the issues which we're gonna get into here in just a minute, we just want to tackle specifically switches because that was a question. Right. But a lot of the issues come down to our fundamental foot placement, alignment, where we are on the foot, mm. how we're transferring weight. That's what we're gonna deal with here in just a second. Okay, so leaders, let's spend a little bit of time on you all. We talked about the follows, switches, or down with swivels, how to make them work out. But leaders, um, almost all of the struggle that we deal with, I would say a good solid minimum, 75 to 85% of the struggle that we deal with as Libby Hoppers as leaders is getting our swing outs faster. Um, and the issue is that we always run into is Every follow does it a little bit differently. Um, maybe I haven't danced these tempos before. Maybe I don't know very many moves. There's all these, but I think the, the biggest one when it comes to swing outs is every follow is expecting something different. And that's good. Because it's it's our job as a leader. No matter who you are, if you're a leader, your job is to help the follow feel safe and comfortable. So if you're coming at your swing out as a leader with a ton of preference as to how it's supposed to be 100% of the time, you're going to find yourself without a whole lot of people wanting to dance with you. I would say the same as a follow, if it has mm -hmm. to be just so-so. Um, There's definitely a compromise between everyone. Yeah. But as a leader, I have more ability to compromise because I know the plan. Oh, there you go. And so if I want the follow to trust what I'm doing, I have to help them feel as though I'm going to make a decision so that they can feel where they need to go. I like it. Um, so I already feel comfortable. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first thing we want to talk about is counts one and two. Just going to throw this one out there, and you can just throw all the hate at me that you want in the comment section. 
I really do not care because the fact of the matter is the best one in two is the one that feels the best at the time it needs to be. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> I like rock steps. I like uh, where falls stay in place. Ooh. Boom, boom. I like where falls come towards me. <gasps> oh, boom, boom. Um, and I like everything in between, everything weird. I like to do, like, uh, coaster steps on one and two. Oh, one, uh, two. Uh, Those are all fun. Um, and they all serve different purposes. And to limit myself to be like, the true swing out is this one stupid idea <laughs> that one person told me this one time when I was 14 years old and I barely was weaning myself off of Happy Meals. I just don't think that logic stands up. I think that leaders, you just need to adapt to have a good dance. Sorry for bashing on Happy Meals, they're delicious. <laughs> Happy Meals are amazing. They're amazing. They, they're, they're tiny toy. Uh, what more do you need? Orange juice. So a lot of times I just don't care what's happening when I dance with someone new. Um, usually they'll, they'll show a preference early on. Oh sure, yeah. And I'll go, okay. And then maybe the next swing out they're showing me something different. And sometimes I might need to get a move done, in which case I will clearly lead that by supplying more energy. Right. But leaders, if you're just doing swing out after swing out after swing out, just adapt to the fall. That's like the best going faster strategy I could ever give any leader. Just let the follow do what they already want to do, and you just keep doing swing outs. They're the cannonball with all the energy. Right. They're volatile. <laughs> yeah. And just take care of them. Just as they're spinning and, and going crazy, just make sure they don't run into you. But that's your only job. It's your only job. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Point number two. Okay. Count four. Point number two, count four. Um, leaders, I'm going to show you a handful of things that I see that really ruin it for the follow. Mm. And I'm going to kind of put them back to back, rapid fire, I'll probably edit them quick. So here's number one. One, two, three, up four. <laughs> Next one. One, two, three, up four. <laughs> one, two, three, up four. The best part is I don't know which one he's gonna do. <laughs> I'm ready. One, two, three, up four. <laughs> One, two, three, four, four five. Jeez. Woo! <laughs> One, two, three, five. I love it. So th this one happens a little later, but this is a little bonus one. Uh oh. One, two, three, four, five. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what a lot of those have in common is either an excess of force on inappropriate counts or an inability to handle the, handle the momentum the follow is generating by sloughing it off. And those are the big things I find most of those problems happen on four. And usually, like you'll see this a lot when people are dancing fast, they'll get to count four after their first swing out and the song's going fast, they go, oh, I can't make it fail. Right, or my favorite. The six count circle. <laughs> the six count circle, yeah. yeah. You're going along and you go, oh no, I can't go this fast. Okay, we're fine. Oh, forget it. We're fine, we're good. <laughs> yeah, you see that happen a lot too. Yeah. Um, we're going to try and talk about count four for the leaders. Um, leaders really take this seriously, and I know dance is a personal thing for us all, but you're strapped to another human being who's <laughs> trying their best to help both of you look good, so just do your best to make it good for everyone. And that goes the same for follows, right? So we're not off the hook. Yeah, you're, we're, yeah, follows. We've it, got our own extra things. Yeah, you've got a lot, yeah. you've got a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so leaders, when you get to count four, three, uh, four, don't try to stretch too far away from the follow. Keep it manageable and under your hip, and also put this left foot back, so don't try to bring it all the way around. Keep it back and almost in line, with the follows, uh, what is that, your right leg? Yeah. So if you notice when I do this again, one, two, three, uh, four, how, how tight I'm kind of keeping this. Um, if I were to take my normal step size, which is pretty long, <laughs> one, two, three, oh my. that's 
so much longer than what the follow is, is, is going through. That seems... Oh, man. Yeah. So if you see this without a partner, this is how far I'm stepping. One, two, three, uh, four. I'm pretty much in place as I do this. One, two, three, and four. And by me hanging out more or less in the same spot, it gives the energy to the follow to get past me. Because I'm not sending the follow into my hand. I'm sending the follow to the other side of me. One, two, three, uh, four. And once I'm here, I've got a full uh, connection into my right hand on her back. And all I have to do is instead of pulling my right hand, I'm just going to rotate and let her fill that out. And that's what helps going into these switches work a whole lot better. Because the more I rotate into this, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. I don't want to go. Right. Do that. Let me make that circle. Let's do it from this angle. Just do it from this angle. Well, let's do it from the other. Okay. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six. It's coming more from a twist of my upper body than it is coming from, from me pulling or pushing the follow yeah. into the next section. And we've all been there. We've all done that where we go, oh. I, the only option I have is to supply power up the arm, or same thing for followers. You go, oh shoot, I'm not getting next to another hook, and we're pulling ourselves in. That's, but that's a stage. We want to move past that. We want to start using our body a lot more than just our arms separated from our body. Not to say that our arms are not a part of our body, but they need to move along with and then follow through, as opposed to moving independently on some of these bigger moves. Right, always remember that when you're connected, so here, you have more power just moving yourself at the bulk of your mass that you just move that mm. as opposed to pulling your arm through. Just move yourself and yeah. the follow can float on out. Right. We are attached already. Shouldn't be a big deal. So we ran out of time. Uh, we really wanted to put triple steps and how to get those faster into this video, but we just can't put out a longer video. That's all right. It's okay. It's okay. We'll be fine. Next week. Next week. Yes. Yeah, so come and join us next week. We'll be talking about how to get the triple steps a little bit faster. Maybe talking about kick steps, some other shortcuts, some things that you can take to get your Lindy Hop faster. Um, we really appreciate you guys. I don't know how long it's going to be that we're going to keep doing these videos. We've been at this for a while. <laughs> it's been too long, but we really hope that everybody's staying safe. And we do think that it's going to be worth it in the end when everybody stays home. And then we can start dancing safely again. Yes. So check out the link below. If you want to show your support. Other than that, see you guys later. Thanks.